It is crucial to take and document vitals prior to donning to ensure that the suit wearer is fit to undergo the decontamination procedure. Vital signs include respiratory rate, heart rate, blood pressure, and general well-being. It is important for the suit wearer to be as comfortable as possible. It is advisable that he or she be in work uniform or scrubs. Remove excess or heavy clothing and personal effects such as shoes, jewelry, pens, and badges and store them in a personal belongings bag. We do this to avoid puncturing the suit and contaminating the wearer. Throughout the pre-donning and donning process, the suit wearer must conserve energy and stay hydrated. The suit support team aids in this effort by supplying water and making sure the suit wearer is seated. This is done to reduce the risk of dehydration and fatigue, which may be associated with donning personal protective equipment. The suit support team retrieves a brand new chemical resistant suit and inspects it for any wear and tear. General inspection of the suit includes checking for the presence of the adhesive strip and making sure the zipper is functional. The suit should not be used if it shows any signs of damage. They're inspecting the suit, they're checking for any wear and tear to make sure that it's fit to use. They're checking to, for the presence of an adhesive strip. The first step of donning personal protective equipment is putting on the chemical resistant suit up to waist level. At this point, we only put the suit up to waist level to avoid exposing the wearer to too much heat until it is necessary. Remember, these suits have a tendency to trap heat, causing the wearer to perspire. The next step is to tie the boot straps, making a non-slip knot. Make sure the knot is not too tight, as this will restrict circulation. Next is to put on boot liners, also known as booties, and surgical gloves. These offer extra protection, especially from liquid contaminants, and it's important for doffing, as we will see later. Put on hazmat boots and secure bands. Then fold the excess suit and make a single fold towards the inside. Seal the opening between the boots and the suit with chem tape. Start about 3 inches below the top of the boot and work your way up to a couple of inches above the boot. Tape from outside to inside following the direction of the fold. Thank you. 
Once you tape back down, start to make a pull tab to facilitate removal of tape during doffing. Do not tape tightly. The point is to seal, not restrict the wearer's range of motion or circulation. The wearer should communicate to the suit support team if he or she senses any discomfort and should check to make sure the taping was done properly. Put on a hydration pack which supplies the wearer with water during the decontamination procedure. Pull suit all the way up and insert your arms into the suit. Secure the suit with the elastic hand straps, placing one over the thumb and the other over the fourth finger. This prevents the sleeve from slipping and exposing the wearer to contaminants. Put on protective rubber gloves, also known as outer gloves. The sealing process is similar to that of the boots. Do not tape over the wrist or elbow, as this will restrict any range of motion and circulation. Once again, the wearer must voice any sense of discomfort and check to make sure the taping was done properly. Since it will not be used, tuck the hood into the inside of the suit. A separate hood will be done later. Zip the suit all the way up and remove adhesive strip to seal.
Reinforce the zipper and seat seam with chem tape. The seat seam in particular is most prone to being torn, especially if the hazmat suit is tight on the wearer. Place and adjust communication equipment. Place microphone around the neck and secure earpiece with tape, as will be shown later. Communication is crucial to the efficiency and safety of the operation. For this level C suit, turn on air purifying respirator and attach air filters. These are designed to filter a significant number of known contaminants. For this demonstration, we are checking the pressure of the system with the barometer. However, the checking of the equipment must be done prior to donning. Place the suit hood over the head and adjust. Make sure the wearer can see clearly. Connect the suit hood to the respirator and tighten connection. Beware of fogging up of the hood. Fogginess indicates poor ventilation and breathing equipment must be adjusted to correct it. Now all personal protective equipment is donned. The wearer and suit support people must communicate with each other to make sure that the wearer has a wide range of motion. The wearer does not feel weak, dizzy, or nauseous. They're able to perform medical tasks, and the wearer must feel well ventilated and can communicate accordingly. Once donning is done, it's time to decon. <laughs> After decontaminating patients, the wearer must decontaminate him or herself by showering. This is done to remove chemical contaminants and ensure the safety of the wearer during doffing, which is the removal of personal protective equipment.
the wearer must step into a sheet or chucks to contain any runoff that may still have some contaminants. The cold zone is an area that is away from the site of patient decontamination and the place in which doffing takes place. The suit support team must be in level D personal protective equipment to protect from any contaminants that may still be present on the wearer. Since the suit hood is the last item to come off, a hood roll is performed to prevent the dripping of contaminants from touching the wearer and all other items of the personal protective equipment. Make sure the hood roll is tight. Undo equipment from the front and place on the seat behind the wearer. Note that the breathing equipment remains attached and functional because we are not yet ready to remove the hood. Use the pull tab to facilitate removal of tape from the suit. To remove the boot, the suit support team must apply resistance to the back of the boots. Unzip and remove the suit by pulling it from the shoulders down. The suit support team should only touch the outside of the suit to avoid contaminating the inside of the suit, which must remain as clean as possible. Untie the bootstraps and the wearer must step into the white parts of the suit. The wearer must remove the hood using his or her own inner gloves. After the wearer is free to step into the clean area. The suit support team must remove their own personal protective equipment as well. Vitals must be taken to ensure the health of the personnel. Another shower inside the hospital is optional. The wearer must also do a debriefing inside the hospital.